Hello and Happy New Year 2023. My name is Shannon and I'm the host, owner and operator of Lunar Ladies. I'm so excited to come to you today on the first day of 2023 to give you an astrological overview or rather a preview of what's to come. Okay, so get your notes out, uh, see what resonates uh, with the information that's presenting itself at this time. And of course, I'll be doing more in-depth observation and analysis as these astrological events draw closer. But I wanted to give you an overview of what to expect for 2023 so that you can start to merge into finding your alignment with your own beautiful mystical self this year. And there's a lot of manifestation, abundance, fast forward motion, really powerful energy available to you from the cosmos as a gift and a blessing. And the cosmos itself is excited to see what you will do with this energy. So everybody is watching and waiting and ready to give you a standing ovation. So all you have to do is just understand and recognize the energy, find your center in that space and boom, get going. <laughs> okay, first things first. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel to get uh, notified. You can click the, the notification bell so that you know when new videos are uploaded. Feel free to comment, like, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel. And uh, let me know if you would like videos on certain topics that I could cover astrologically for you. I love getting uh, the viewers' ideas because it helps me figure out what you're interested in. And then it's exciting for me to take a look with you. Okay, let's get started. So January 2023, and looking at, I'm going to show you what the big planets are doing, the transcendental planets, meaning the outer planets, everything beyond Chiron, right? or we, you know, Jupiter can go either way. And then we'll look at the inner planets and what they're doing, just to give you that understanding of a, a more of an overview under a uh, idea of how to focus yourself uh, so that you can be most empowered. And then I'm going to share my screen. We're going to take a look at the January 1st, 2023, 12.01 a.m. chart, just to see what that has to share with us. And then I want to look over the year 2023. That's equals to a seven and the year of the rabbit, which is the, after, or the lunar new year energy. And then I'll go into the zodiac year, which starts with the new moon in Aries. So let's actually start there. So January... Uh, or 2023 rather, two plus two plus three is a seven. And a seven is a highly spiritual number. Now I also utilize the beautiful wisdom of the tarot. And I like to translate astrology through the tarot and tarot into astrology. And the number seven in the major arcana in tarot is the chariot. So imagine the chariot with its two wheels. And I like to look at those wheels, like two wheels of fortune, and they want to get going. And so it's the, and the driver of the chariot knows exactly where to go, when to go and how to go uh, with strength and empowerment. So the chariot energy is here available for us through this year at that number seven vibration. And so in order to make your chariot move and you know win the race is to understand yourself through the spiritual lens and we can start with the number seven and looking at where do we find seven in the body we can find the number seven through the seven major chakras and so this indicates that it's a great year to be focusing on making sure that your chakra your subtle body is healthy wealthy and wise starting at the root at the base of the tailbone going all the way up to the crown chakra working with your uh, opening them up, clearing them, uh, the crown points up, the root points down, and then the, the other five, sacral, solar, heart, throat, third eye, have a, a front and a back. And uh, the chakra is a, a Sanskrit word meaning wheels. And so I love that we have that, uh, that repeat where we have the chariot with its two wheels and the wheels are give the motion to drive it forward. And then we have the chakras, wheels that are spinning front and back, front being the yin of the body, meaning, you know, taking energy in and feeling it. And the yang is more the back where we're defend or protect or become aware of what's behind us. And then the root roots in to Panchamama, earth. 
and to ground those lower chakras, the root, the sacral, the solar, right, in those lower bodies and, you know, being in the physical world as a spirit being, we have to ground those chakras into the earth so that they take care of our needs, right? Root chakras, your base core needs, uh, feeling safe and secure, having enough money, having a place to live, having enough food and water to drink, having health. So those are those base needs of the physical body and then we move into the sacral where we give birth where we have ideas and we um we bring things out into the world to creativity and that sensuality and working with that emotional uh, uh womb essence of creation and then we move to the solar which is our inner sun it's our will it's our drive and that's a really a powerful energetic chakra for this seven year of the chariot to move it forward and when we're looking at it through the lens of spiritual year, that spiritual solar chakra is not my will, meaning the ego, the separated self, devoid of connection to a greater consciousness of the higher self and spirit. It's thy will, that divine, that divinity within, that divine spark of awareness, consciousness, higher uh, uh, self, um, desire to be on the physical world with a purpose. Right. So not my will, but thy will be done in me right here, right now. So that could be a really good mantra to explore uh, this year. And what does that mean to you? And so those are the three lower chakras that we really want connected to the earth and the here and the now to be satiated, fulfilled, healthy, strong. And then we get to the heart, which is the bridge between the lower worlds and the upper worlds, the lower chakras, the upper chakras, and the, and the heart chakra right in the center of the chest is our heart, our love, what has value and meaning to us, um, giving, uh, receiving love, feeling loved, and, and uh, giving love, you know, being, you know, offering love to others. And uh, so then that opens the field to the upper chakras, the upper bodies, which is the throat, and the throat is the echo of the second, the sacral chakra, the creative uh, expression. And then we go into the third eye and seeing the consciousness of the universe, tapping in to the Akashic libraries to, uh, I love, I'm reading a book called Conscious Dreaming by Robert Moss. And it's about be being a shaman in your own dreams to understand uh, and, and communicate with with your consciousness, the higher consciousness, the cosmos. And it's a more, it's a really exciting way to, to live as a spirit having a human experience. But one of the premises that he teaches in the book is that we're not here to learn uh, what the soul already knows. We're here to remember what the soul already knows. And so from that third eye chakra, you can see more of a vastness of, of cosmic consciousness. And you can tap into what your soul, who's been, in multiple lifetimes, many times all over the universe already knows. And so when I'm looking at things that I've been wanting to learn, meaning what am I resonating with? I'm curious about. I'm looking at it more through the lens of I am resonating or curious about the subject or this um, craft or this thing that I, uh, I'm telling myself I want to learn how to do that or to or to understand that more. And really, I'm, I'm exchanging that uh, proclamation and I'm saying I am remembering what how to do this or that I already know how to do this or speak this or uh, understand this at a deeper level. I am remembering and it's a whole different it's a game changer. Right. It is a very different energy that you can tap into, remembering that you're a soul with vast uh, gifts and uh, mastery that you are bringing down through the veil into this material, dense world to remember. And so try that. Give it a, a practice. Say instead of, oh, I want to learn this or I'm learning this. And I, here's an example. I want to learn how to play the guitar. And if I'm already like resonating with oh I think the guitar is beautiful and to be able to, to make music with an instrument a stringed instrument using my hands and rhythm and timing and and to make beautiful sounds that cheer myself and others up or writing songs composing through chord progressions things like that now I'm telling myself now I am remembering that I already know how to play the guitar and I already know how to write songs and I understand how music works through chords, progressions and, you know, uh, scales and theories. And, you know, I already know this. Right. And so it is a whole different vibe um, that you could have a lot more fun and less frustration. So that's 
a third eye kind of opening up to the higher uh, realms and dimensions of a more vast access to universal consciousness. And then of course the cram, which uh, connects you to your supreme being or the source of creation through that uh, higher monadic self. And so that's what the chariot wants to help you remember to say, okay, if, you know, fast forward motion at a spiritual frequency has to come from uh, the subtle body, the chakra system, open, functioning, and uh, those wheels are turning. Okay, another act, a way that we can access the number seven in a spiritual way that's part of our uh, human conscious fabric of awareness is uh, it shows up in the seven veils or the excuse me, the seven initiations. And I'm reading a book um, that you might be interested in reading as well. And shout out to two of my Kelly friends who reminded me and, and, and another friend, Karen. So Kelly, Kelly and Karen, they all said, read this book, Shannon. You haven't read this book, what? <laughs> right? And it's Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Waterston. So I just started to read that uh, this weekend. And it she right in the beginning she talks about the seven veils or the seven rites the seven initiations and you know christian if you're you know know the bible it could be the seven deadly sins but it's, a, it's those trials or initiations that the the ego has to go through to shed those um those parts of the personality that don't serve the highest self moving forward and so we see that seven appear there again as these seven rites and you can see that through the Mary Magdalene teachings. You can see that through uh, Inanna initiation of letting go all those of, of the veils and the rites of initiation in the underworld. So that's where seven shows up again. And then we can also see seven showing up one last time in the 777 jackpot. <laughs> so that just think of that, you know, imagine that in your mind's eye, you're pulling a slot machine and all three sevens come up and all the coins start falling out. That's a, a, a really a wonderful experience of a chariot seven spiritual high vibe chakras flowing, uh, you know, getting through the, the rights and of the of the ego and shedding those old skins that don't no longer serve you. That's the seven, seven, seven jackpot vibration. OK, so that's the year by year energy that we're stepping into. When the Lunar New Year comes, and that's going to be with the new moon in Aquarius happening January 21st, I believe, 20, 21st, 22nd, depend, depending on where you are in the world. And that initiates the uh, new animal vibration. 2022 is a water tiger, and tigers are very solitary. Water's yin, emotional consciousness, water, creative energy. The tiger hands the torch over to the rabbit or the hare. And the rabbit is fast forward. I didn't realize that, uh, you know, I was looking at more from the Celtic point of view around, okay, the symbology of the rabbit is known as the hare. And the hare has been discovered in, uh, you know, Celtic Europe as being clocked at 40 miles, miles per hour at the rate of speed that they can fly <laughs> and move their body. So they are fast. And I love that we have those wheels on the chariot with the matching the hair, the rabbit's vibration. And it wants to move uh, your desires, your what you value into the world at a very fast speed. Rabbits also multiply very quickly. So this is that of, of fertility, abundance, multiplying fast and remember this energy is uh its consciousness is neutral in vibration so it's gonna move something fast in your life whether you have decided it's good or bad so that's why you want to clear your body clear your chakras clear your your auric field clear those seven layers so this energy as it moves through you it moves really fast and it multiplies something that you desire to be a part of in the material world so that's another uh yes or a nod to clearing your 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 vibration <laughs> now i like to do it through tuning forks that really helps me that's one of my uh that's one of my vibe tribes and i have access i'm going to be offering access to my course content and my workshops uh as part of an opportunity to join my locals community and i'm going to be announcing that closer to the lunar new year with the new moon in Aquarius, which opens up the doorway to, uh, you know, generating a beautiful, happy community that's, uh, you know, has access to high vibe material on an ongoing basis. Okay. 
so the lunar new year will bring in that new moon in Aquarius, bring in the year of the, of the hair. Also at the same time that uh, Uranus goes direct. Uranus rules Aquarius in the modern astrology. And we have that new moon in Aquarius and Uranus going direct. And that's fast forward motion, shocking turn of events. Uh, lightning liberation energy too. So that's also a good indication of the swiftness and the change power of 2023, especially at the new lunar year beginning, the new moon in Aquarius. Now, the third aspect, so we have the solar new year that we're celebrating on the Gregorian calendar as New Year's Day, January 1st. And then we have the lunar new year, which is more of an older calendar that uh, has been observed throughout history. And that begins with the new moon in Aquarius, January 21st, 22nd. And then an astrological new year starts with the new moon in Aries. And that happens right after spring equinox. So that's really exciting. And not only do we have one new moon in Aries, we have two. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, fire. So Aries energy is, is highlighted for this year. So make that a note. And then Guess who's transiting through Aries uh, this year? And that's Jupiter. And Jupiter takes about a year to go through each sign. So you can think back, what was happening 12 years ago, which would have been, um, let's see, 13, 12, 11, 2011. What was happening in 2011? So you can take a look back at your life. That was the last time Jupiter was in Aries. And so Jupiter will be through Aries with this double new moon in Aries. First one at one degree. Aries, the beginning of the zodiac, as spring equinox, which is the beginning of spring here in the northern hemisphere. And then it's going to end uh, at 29 degrees, new moon Aries. That's going to happen on April 19th, right before the sun moves into Taurus. So, and that'll be 29 degrees. So you have the bookends, the whole gamut of Aries. So that to me was an indication that Aries is a prominent astrological energy that we can tap into. And what does Aries do? Boom, let's get into motion. Just do it. It's that thoroughbred that wins the trifecta, all three races. <laughs> like, and so in order to keep that pace at a Olympic speed, 2023 also is reminding you that your physical well-being is paramount. So you want to be focusing on getting stronger in your body, getting uh, more toned and fit, eating well. Food is fuel right? Fuel so that you can uh, keep this marathon power, exciting energy in motion and that you can go and win all, win the race. Now, remember the tortoise and the hare, you know, glean the wisdom. You don't want to be going willy-nilly super fast and then get your lost along the way. You also want to have moments that you understand how to refuel and reset and rest. So that is an important component with this fast forward energy is getting that wisdom of the, the tortoise, the, the divine mother goddess energy that says it's time to rest, it's time to refuel, it's time to uh, re-strategize and you know, seek that divine counsel. Staying in contact with that as much as possible throughout this year. So taking a look at the three highlights of the, the, the starts, solar new year today, January 1st, Lunar New Year, January 21, 22nd, and then March 21st, uh, New Moon in Aries, New Zodiac, Zodiac Year. And uh, so what happens between now and the Lunar New Year? We have Mars and Mercury going direct. That's exciting. Mars has been retrograde since October 30th in Gemini. He won't leave that sign until March. And just in time, for the spring equinox power of Aries, Mars will be moving out of Gemini and into the sign of Cancer where he's in his fall. He's not that excited to be in Cancer, but that would indicate to me that that's a good time to refuel, nourish your body. So between now and spring equinox, you want to just, you want to be getting into motion. You want to be like, okay, if I exercise, let me add this. Or if I haven't been exercising that much, let me begin to move my body. Because another aspect of 2023 is finding those places where you feel good, creating that home energy. And to me, that spoke of first and foremost, you want to feel good in your body because your body is your home for the soul and you're taking it everywhere you go. So it wants to, you want it to feel good. So make that uh, an intention for this whole year. And you might say, you know, I, 
I, it might take me a while to start feeling better in my body. That's okay. Let it be the next 12 months. And what can you do to continually move that forward? So by the end of the year, you've met like a specific goal or you, you know, of how you want to feel. So you want to feel good in your body. You want to feel strong. You want to feel healthy so that you can uh, run this energy through the physical body and it feels good. All right. Otherwise, sometimes things will come along and, and kind of redirect you to realizing how important it is to have a healthy and strong, happy body. Okay. And that's also nutrients. Remember, food is fuel. So your food needs to be full of nutrients right? That run, that get your body into that Ferrari energy, <laughs> One running really well, like a well-oiled machine. Uh, but also to me, the body is an instrument, more like a musical instrument. So you want it finely tuned, taken care of, cared for. Okay. So in between January 1st and the Lunar New Year, we also have a full moon and that full moon is in Cancer. And that's the uh, great mother's moon. And it's a super nurturing time. And that will happen January 6th on one of my favorite days of the year, which is Epiphany, uh, the arrival of the three kings. I love the three kings because they're the three astrologers, the Chaldean astrologers. So they have a place close to my heart. And so I love to celebrate the arrival of the three kings. And we have a full moon in Cancer, which lights their way. <laughs> So it's super nurturing time to uh, nurture yourself, nurture and be nurtured uh, at the family, the mother, maternal vibration. So tuning in, it's a sweet time. So make sure that you're available to receive those blessings of that time. And you can look to my blog. I'll be writing a blog soon this week on that uh, full moon. And I'm very excited to take a look. Okay, and so from there, we're going to move to the Lunar New Year where we have Uranus going direct, which is going to be super exciting, and the year of the rabbit begins. And then when we move into the Zodiac year in March, we're also going to see uh, a changing of the guards. Two of our transcendental planets, the outer planets, Saturn and Pluto, will be changing in signs. Saturn will move into Pisces for two and a half years where he'll come in contact with Neptune, uh, the ruler of Pisces or the modern ruler of Pisces. And so uh, as that draws closer, we'll break that down of the Saturn transit through Pisces. So just be aware that that's coming, a shift of uh, you know Saturn contracts to help you focus. Pisces is a very spiritual sign. It's the universe, no boundaries. But we have to also look at the shadow of Pisces and that constricting energy of Saturn in shadow. And we'll take a look at what that means for the collective. But in the brighter side, Saturn helps you develop mastery. And Pisces in the, the brighter side is unconditional love. So it could be, you know, the opportunity is available for uh, to develop mastery in unconditional love. Who doesn't want that on the planet? And then Pluto, who's the farthest planet that we recognize in our solar system, it's a gatekeeper for soul, changes signs from Aquarius, uh, from Capricorn, where it's been since 2008, into Aquarius, which will, you know, defines a new generation, a new group of souls with soul, a new soul agreement on the planet. And that's in Aquarius. Aquarius is about the community, hopes and dreams, manifesting the future by being here now. It's the crown chakra ruled by the crown chakra now. Saturn has just gone through the last two and a half years in Aquarius, clearing your crown chakra. So when Pluto moves in, Pluto is like the soul energy and it's bringing new, fresh soul energy onto the planet with new soul agreements around building community. And then, of course, we look at the shadow side of Aquarius, which could be like isolation, aloneness, too much AI, transhumanism, technology that's not in service to the crown chakra, but more in service to controlling the crown chakra so we're going to take a look at that as it draws closer but that's big for 2023 is two uh, outer planets saturn and pluto ch both changing signs which is big enough but they're changing signs in the same month which is huge <laughs> and uh, they won't be really in set in their strength um Till 2024 so we're going to get this preview because pluto will be dipping his toe into aquarius and then he's going to move back when he retrogrades to capricorn to clean some stuff up based on what you've seen needs to change and then it's going to move forward 
and be there for, uh, I'm not sure, 16, 18 years. It's usually how long it takes Pluto to go through the sign. You know, 12 to 18 years. Okay, so we have those. So let's come into the another uh, the next layer of the highlight. So our outer planet highlights Saturn and Pluto changing signs. Big deal. So let's move into the the inner self, the inner planets. And what hi highlighted itself to me was Mars and Venus, and and the nodal change. Okay, but before we get there, let's just say hello to Mercury because Mercury's in retrograde right now. So Mercury will be retrograding in the Earth signs in 2023. Right now it's in Capricorn. Then in uh, he will retrograde in Taurus and then he will retrograde in Virgo. And then one more time in Capricorn at the end of the year. So just know that you're getting a review in the earth elements in your charts and it's a very grounding. It's a really uh, resetting the foundation. Mercury's going to help you with that, which is so nice. So Virgo health and wellness. Capricorn uh, foundation for contribution and legacy as an adult out in the world. You know, what are you offering that makes the world better? And then Taurus to stabilize, plant, sustain, and grow something new that has value and worth to you. Um, it also helps with your feeling safe and secure on the planet. Okay, so Mercury going direct at the beginning of the year is huge, right? Because he's and he's going to continue his journey through. Gemini and then change signs in March along with Saturn and Pluto. So that's, so he's highlighted and he's our, the masculine energy on the planet as well as the inner masculine within everyone. And then uh, Venus will be going into a retrograde this year and she will retrograde in the sign of Leo, right? Fire, heart chakra. And we have a nodal wave change. And that's also going to happen in July. So Venus goes retrograde in review in July. And the nodal wave, the nodes of the moon change signs. And that's an 18-month journey that when the nodes change a sign. So we're cl clearing and cleaning up the nodal wave in Taurus and Scorpio. And we're moving into Aries Libra, right? Because they go backwards. So the north node will become the Aries north node ruled by Mars. And with the secondary ancient ruling of Scorpio, right? We're just leaving the south node of Scorpio. It's handing it over to its ruler, Mars, into the north node, which is expansion and growth and taking an evolutionary step forward from the soul level. And then the south node goes into Libra, and Libra is ruled by Venus. And Venus also rules Taurus, the north node. So we're getting this sh a shift change. And uh, still operating through the Mars and Venus vibration. Now, Mars will be in the helm moving moving the collective forward through Aries. Who am I? My divine spark, my divine self. And then Venus will be uh, reconstructing the past and letting go of bound energy through Libra. And Libra's balance in relationship and authenticity. So they'll be working together. So to me, those two planets on an inner realm are highlighted. Mars and Venus. So watch their transits through your chart. Uh, it's about balancing your inner masculine and feminine vibration. And then however you identify from externally, you can make sure that those are healthy and functioning vibrations within you. So July is a big month for change. Mars or March is a big month for change. Now, when I was looking at the two powers of Saturn and Pluto, which are collective experiences that we, you know, we experience them collectively together, the inner planets of, you know, the Mercury retrogrades that happen every year, three to four times, and then Mars, Venus, um, with a huge shift change because of that nodal wave presence of being in their signs. Chiron becomes the bridge. Okay, and I'll end this video here. I want you to look at the Chironic force being the bridge between the inner and outer worlds, right? And the inner world, what's happening in here presents itself as a mirror, as your external uh, experience of what kind of comes your way. It's attracted to whatever is happening on, in the inner world. Now, Chiron is still in Aries. So he's going to be working with that North Node in Aries with Mars. He's going to be working with the Jupiter and Aries transit this year. So they're working simultaneously over here. 
So that's how you'll kind of merge and connect with Aries energy through the North Node, through uh, Jupiter, through uh, Mars and Chiron, healing. Now, on the flip side, Chiron, the bridge, handing this energy off to the other side, we have, uh, you know, Venus and Libra governing the past and the patterns around relationships. We have, um, you know, she brings in that Taurus energy as well, because she's the ruler of Taurus. And who do we find in Taurus? But Uranus. So Uranus says, well, let me start coming into the picture as, you know, Saturn and Pluto are busy over there changing signs and getting their orders for the next you know years for humanity so uranus comes in as a sneaker wave <laughs> and he's like remember i went direct at the lunar new year with the year of the rabbits so you know i've got i'm in the hot seat so you're gonna want to you know be cognizant of uranus energy in that taurus field in your chart and they're going to be he's going to be working through your relationship space with venus and you know they work well together um because uh uranus is that sky god in love with the gaia energy which rules the taurus vibration that venus is the spiritual director of now um saturn's going to be working in that space as well because he's because it is relationship based and he's going to be in those soul connections through pisces so saturn will also be part of that south node so if we split and create teams we've got the south node venus uranus um, Libra, bringing in that Taurus energy with Uranus and Saturn looking at those soul karmic contract connections from the past. And then Pluto is kind of collectively saying, let's get it back together. So, you know, we build the good ship lollipop and we all transcend together, right? That's the Pluto Aquarius dream. And then on the other team is North Node Aries with Mars, Jupiter, Chiron, working through uh, taking that evolutionary step further. Like there's a growth aspect in your divine spark, your divine nature. So that's how I see 2023 as an overview preview of what's to come. Feel free to watch this video a couple of times because there's a lot of information. Join me in my Lunar Ladies Facebook, Facebook group community. You can find the link here in, um, in the description of this video. So that there's an opportunity there and then wait for it. I'm going to have a new opportunity to, to get access to my course content workshops and things that I, all my goodies that I have in the Wise River Medicine tool bag. Uh, there's going to be opportunity for you to join my locals community there as well. So stay tuned. And if you like this video and you want to share it with others, feel free to do that. That helps grow my channel. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon with more breakdowns and astrological analysis. Have a great 2023. Bye for now.